Hi, my name is Levi. I'm with Brightside Racing. Um, on all the forums and stuff, there's a ton of people talking about how much does it actually cost to get into desert racing with a UTV. And I want to share with you a little bit on what it actually costs to put one of these together and things that you need, things that you'll want to have, and things that you have to have to actually contend in a race. So, uh, starting out with things that we need, of course you need a cage. There's rule books for best in the desert, score, um, all the off-road ones have their own. So to build your cage, you're looking probably 1500 bucks. Got to be DOM, Chrome Molly. If you don't have a pipe bender, you got to buy one of those, and notchers, abrasives, welding wire. So even building yourself, probably gonna be about 1500 bucks. Your skins, you got to get aluminum all the way around. It's got to be 080 minimum on the roof. So probably another 500 bucks for that. The extinguishers, you need a couple quick release extinguishers. I have one on the far side that's accessible from the outside, so you can grab it, as well as another one mounted inside of the cab. So you can just grab it when you need it from inside. You need a couple horns. Actually, you only need one. We got a couple of them on here that are fun to have, but you want it to be loud so when you're in the dirt behind somebody, you can honk, get their attention, tell them to get out of the way. You're looking about 300 bucks for those. Window nets and hardware. We got small nets up here, full net that flips up up here with a latch. You have to have the quick release latch, they have to be SFI approved. I went with Stroud. Stroud's great, fast turnaround time, good pricing. A couple hundred dollars there. Um, you have to have a blue light, which is not tight, but you need a blue light for score or for best in the desert that warns the traffic behind you, the faster traffic, as well as the other lights that I have on my rear light bar here are for score. So that light right there is a hundred bucks. The other rear light bar with those ones are your couple hundred dollars. IRC does the tracking for the races. They provide you with a little black box with a few buttons on it. If you roll over, they're alerted. If you're stopped for a while, they're alerted. It tracks you live. Most of you guys are probably familiar with that. You can see it on the computer. Those, uh, you need to get the setup kit, which comes with the GPS antenna, the hardwire deal, the bracket. That's $275, must have. You need a fuel cell. I went with Fuel Safe in my car. There's a lot of different ones. I know Jazz is a lot cheaper, that kind of stuff, but uh, Fuel Safe is good. I went with a 22 gallon fuel cell, so I got amazing range. It has a bladder in it. Once you get your top filler neck piece, the top filler cap to fill into it, all that stuff, you're looking $1,200. You need to get a sending unit and gauge, otherwise you won't know when you're about out of fuel or what you got in there. That's a couple hundred dollars. And I went with an Aeromotive pump, filter, and regulator. You can go with cheap ones, and there's a lot of them that aren't, aren't quite as good, but I, I hear stories of other guys hydro-locking out there. And with those ones, the, the, the pressure and the amount of flow that you have through it keeps your fuel A, cool as it's running through there, and, and B, you're not going to be hydro-locking. It's, it's the better stuff, but it's $1,000 for that stuff. Then you need all braided lines. You can't leave your plastic lines. So we welded AN fittings on each end of our rail, put on all steel braided lines. That's another 600 bucks. You have to have a radio. I went with a sealed Kenwood radio from PCI Race Radios. Um, I think they're pretty much the best ones you can get for these cars. Of course, they got the big heavy duty 110 watt one, but too much amperage for a small car like this. So you're $450 for that. You need a good intercom. We got the best intercom you can get with the DSP chip, which creates it to a digital signal for better stuff. You're $1,000 for that. Helmets, you got to get a couple helmets that are all wired up with air, with the radio, thousand bucks for a couple of helmets minimum. And then you need a GPS home with the Lawrence Elite 7M between the GPS and antenna, you're a thousand dollars on that. Then you need all your sealed switches and electrical and buttons for all that kind of stuff. You're a couple hundred dollars for that. Parker pumper, you have to have that for your helmet. Two hundred dollars, you want to grab some spare filters, hoses to fit, plug in your helmet. You're out there driving in the dust, you got to have it to, to be able to breathe and your helmet skirt's all tucked in, so you got nice, clean, fresh air. Pretty much a must, a couple hundred dollars there. Seats are required. Um, I got Twisted Stitch seats, about 850 bucks for a pair of them. There's, there's definitely some other companies out there that make them. I really like these, they're comfortable, they're light. And of course, five-point harness. Personally, I like Dragonfire is the best. Three-inch five-point harness, they're all pretty much the same, but these are comfortable. I've been uh, rung around a few times in them, and, walked away just fine and doesn't hurt my shoulder. So those are things that are a need. Besides the fact that you need a, what I started with as a base is a Polaris Razor XP4, which is a, the four seater 2013, $20,000 out the door, base model. So it's came a long ways. A lot of guys start with different stuff, but you're looking 20 grand for your car if you're starting with something fresh. Those are the, the things that were required for actual safety that you have to have. Some of the things you're also going to need, though, to be able to race, pretty much must-haves, is you need bead locks, of course, and you need tires. 
Uh, bead locks are 205 bucks a piece, tires are $180 a piece. You'll probably need 10 of them because you need all the way around some spares. The under, underneath the car on the bottom of it, we had a lot of problem with the Baja 500 with it smashing up into our driveline. So we put a piece of three quarter inch UHMW all the way across. I know they have some UHMW skid plates out there that are about three eighths, but ours is three quarters. Super beefy as well as bracing underneath there. So that's about $750 for the parts to be able to build that. Um, then uh, you, you're gonna need a jack. You can either go with like an FOH screw jack, 350 bucks, a king jack, 750 bucks, or just a Harbor Freight jack, build them out, throw it on there. I know a lot of the guys choose to use those, whatever you want. Uh, radiator, if you got your radiator up in the front, it's gonna get packed with dirt, caked up. I've raced with a stock radiator. I know it's taken me out of a race. So either that or you're gonna get rocks in there, it's gonna break. So you're gonna need a bigger radiator. I got the CBR radiator that's made for an Ecotech, but it keeps us really cool, hot races, long races. My fans don't run much, keeps everything running good. 850 bucks, another $600 for all your hoses. We used AN fittings on the hoses and just welded the bungs directly to our thermostat and on there so there's no hose clamps and loose rubber stuff in between. You're gonna to wanna to weld on gusset kit for the front. A lot of times the A-arms take some serious abuse. If you don't, you'll bend stuff. I'm not sure about the other manufacturers. I believe in Claris to make a good product, but you wanna do a weld on gusset kit to keep things strong on there as well. Power steering, if you're gonna be doing a thousand mile Baja 500, that 1000 or the Baja 500, any of them, you're gonna need power steering. You're gonna get beat up, worn out, between the ruts, all that stuff. So you gotta have power steering, that's $1,000. Uh, as you can see, the cab's pretty small inside. Uh, it's cozy. I like having my wheel close to me so I can drive, be more comfortable, not reaching far out. But with having it closer, that means that it's difficult to get in and out, especially through the smaller window holes. So I got a quick release adapter with the Dragonfire wheel, the dished one to get it closer to me. I really like the setup. That's $300. You're going to need a heavy duty steering rack at the bottom because you're taking the abuse. Now that you got the 30 inch tires on there and you got a 2,000 pound car, takes way more abuse. So you're gonna to wanna to do the heavy duty steering rack. You don't want something like that taking you out of the race. It's only $350. You want the heavy duty tie rods. Those things bend, I probably bent three of them and it happens. So you need the heavy duty ones to match everything else, especially the big wheels and the weight and the big brake kit. Now that you got all this weight, you got the big tires, you're rolling down hills and you're racing, you're on it, hitting the brakes fast. So you're gonna need the big brake kit. That's $530 all the way around from Lone Star. All right, a couple other things that you're gonna to need to race. Um, it, besides all your heavy duty steering stuff, your brakes, all that is your clutch. Uh, stock clutching, and it, you go through belts, that's the bottom line out there. So you can go with Dragonfire, get a clutch kit, which comes with the weights, the springs, the whole nine yards, get it set up for the weight of your car, how you want it, that's 300 bucks. We went with the Alba belt temp sensor, it's $150, but it plugs into your belt exhaust, and you can keep an eye on your temperature. So when you're out there in the hot sun, running through silt, four wheel drive, hammering down, things are getting hot, you can back off before you lose 15 minutes out there in the dirt trying to change a belt. So that's nice to have. We also have a little inline blower. It's 12 volt direct current, four inch inline blower. So it sucks air and keeps a lot of flow going through the belt housing. Try to assist in keeping things cool. I know guys like Jagged X and some of the other ones, uh, one gear, they got the, the roof scoop up on top. So that way it's got ram air. As far as performance goes, um, we this is a bone stock XP900 motor. We got pretty much nothing done to it. No cams, anything. We have the Dragonfire Dragon Breather uh, intake on there, about $300 stuck in there. It's a good idea. The stock one will clog up. This one won't. It's actually been amazing. We've been out buried in silt, stays clean. Muzzy's exhaust, $900. And then we got the CDI programmer chip, Power Commander 5, which is about $300. You can also go with the Muzzy's Big Bore kit, which Alba can put in for you and get it all styling on there. Uh, of course, you get into a lot more big bucks once you get into your motor. So. As far as suspension goes, I think suspension is really important. It's more important than uh, building your engine, clearly. What we went with was, was the HCR suspension. It's all boxed A-arms, boxed trailing arms. I feel like as far as their arms go, they're the best on the market. It's $6,000 for their kit. It comes with the King Shocks. It gives you longer axles. We went with all 570 CVs and Summer Brothers racing axles. We put a Wrath sway bar on the back of it. Keep the, the sway down. That was $450. On, the, on our rear shocks, we went with a 16 inch King coilover with the internal bypass. So it has a big needle valve inside of there as it gets down and gets stiffer. Setting up your own suspension like that, uh, you're looking probably about $2,500 for these two shocks on either side. You need your limiting straps to get everything set up right. You don't have to have them, but using them saves the abuse of the, the dropout on your shaft. That's about $200. And then we went with the Lone Star high clearance radius rods on the back. They're super thick. Super heavy duty, 
and of course it gives us extra clearance. Those are $230. All right, so once your car is built, then to actually get out and race, you're going to need a lot of other things. You're going to need like six dump cans, tow strap, chase radios for your chase trucks, probably some GoPros, uh, fire extinguishers for your chase trucks, fire suits, shoes, gloves, whatever all that stuff that you want. You got to do your stickers with your numbers. Um, and then there's tons of miscellaneous stuff, all the abrasives, welding stuff, little things like, like this clamp for the light, a lot of little parts and stuff involved in building these that, that you don't think of that add up to be a lot take a lot of time and takes a little bit of money to do it this one is just me and my buddy sean spaulding built it in our garage hundreds of man hours tons of work a couple other neighborhood groupies helping us out so it's been a ton of fun and good luck with you on your off-road utv build